Hi there, David and Steen at the loaded 4x4 HQ and Steen, I've got the dud. You've, this, got, you've got the dud this, I, this time, mate. I've got the dud. I've got the original and I've got equipment the, manufacturer. And I've got the best tow bar we've ever seen. Yep. yep. The OEM tow bar versus the Milford Ultimate, and they're like chalk and cheese, yeah. even just sitting here on the yeah. bench. These ones are for the same car, by the way. Yeah. So, so let's pick this one to bits. <laughs> it's not going to be hard. Trust me. Let, let's talk about the, the fabrication of this thing. So it's, it's not badly made, you know, the welds are nice and tidy, so I'm right. not going to tick them off on that. And it is rated to the same rating as this bar, so 3.5 tonnes. Correct. But you have to wonder about the connection to the car with these yep. end plates, because they are quite unlike what Milford had done there. Yes, exactly. So these, these end plates bolt on, whereas yep. these Milford ones have an interlocking system behind here. Yeah. So and it's, it's a case, a bit yep. like a Lego block, you, you pull it over the... The yeah. high points and then so and according to Milford you can actually they, they've tested it without without the bolts in so it'll actually support the support load. the load just on the interlocks just, just on the interlocks without wow, the bolts. That's, that's pretty clever and not only that steam but we need to look at how they secure it so in my case on the OEM tow bar yep. we've got this regular old nut and bolt arrangement it's zinc plated so it's sort of corrosion resistant but there's nothing too much going on there to see there's no lock nut or locking compound no so this is the Milford version which is and it's aircraft grade with a locking compound on the thread and a decent sized nut as well. Yeah, so that's yep. never going to come undone, yep. whereas I wager that on corrugations, done enough times, that'll wriggle its way loose. Yeah. So that's not much chop. Um, if we look at the actual receiver hitch arrangement, so we've got a 50 mil uh, hitch in there, nothing particularly surprising there, but the bane of my existence is something underneath. So I'm just going to roll this over because everybody and You're about to talk cat. about rattles, aren't you? Yeah. Yep. Use an anti-rattle bolt, which is this gizmo down in here. Now, I hate these things because they're put in the dumbest spot yep. to prevent owners getting invested in servicing them on a regular basis. So what they do is they'll put the hitch in, yep. screw the bolt up nice and tight, and it says quite clearly on and the instructions. forget about it. Yeah, and forget yeah. about it. Yep. It says quite clearly on the instructions that when you're using those rattle bolts, you use it when there is no load on the tow bar. Yep. So on the day when you put the caravan or the camper on the back there and you're supposed to remove yep. that, do they do it? No. no. And of course the other thing that happens... And of course if you do, you end up with a rattly hitch. Yeah. So what's yeah. the point? Go figure. Yep. The other thing that gives me the heebie-jeebies is that because they sit in there yep. for all of their life, they get corroded up and then you can't slide the receiver out yeah, okay. on that day when you want to use it as a recovery point. So it's just dumb and dumber. Well, Milford have that problem licked. Yeah. So what have they done? So. And it's all, it, it, just comparing the two, just look at the, the fabrication that's gone into this and the design that's gone into So it always blows our minds with the Milford yeah. side of things. They, they're clever people. They're clever people. So, and you've got the receiver here, or the receiver tube there, receiver tube here. There's your receiver end cap. If you're not using it, you need the hitch in on the OEM bar. So this is their hitch hush system. One hitch of the very, hush. Hitch hush. So as you push your, your uh, lug in, that puts pressure on your lug and your rattles disappear and that can stay there for as long as you've got the right. hitch in. So there's no messy bolt to get nope. rusted up and, and nope. corrode, uh, and it allows you to get the, the hitch out yep. so that, uh, again, there's no corrosion. If, no corrosion, if be for and it stays on while you're towing exercise. your van or your trailer. Right. And whilst we're talking about yep. these things, I mentioned uh, on our earlier video that another thing... That well, my pin's me... better than your pin, David. Sure. <laughs> Goes without Do saying. Do pins? Yeah. So I've got a mould steel fact, one. I'll, I'll hold it like that so that you can see the... Yep. The thought and design that's gone into this stainless steel pin. Yeah, so mine's just a with, a, a, with a... with a plastic handle for easy Yeah, and I've got a bent lump use. of steel. Yep. And the arc clip goes in there and is secure, but these things yep. again suffer from corrosion. Yeah. And then trying to get them out at a later date is, yeah. is often Whereas the Milford, very, very the Milford pin has a slot yep. around it. That... So this is the OEM way of finishing a job off. So you put that plastic block in there, put the locating pin in, and that's your dress finish. Now, the problem I have with these is if you're out in the field and you've got the hitch set up like that, the first exit you do out of a deep gully, this chrome doodah is going to fall out the back of the car and land on the ground Just and never be off, seen again. Yep, yep, comes off every single time. In fact, up at Cockatoo Valley... And we should say, point out that you're an off-road driver trainer, so yeah. you're going to be seeing I this, see this regularly. Yeah. So up at uh, Cockatoo Valley, where we do the bulk of our yep. training, I reckon I could start a tin mine up there with the number <laughs> of these that have been lost in the mud yep. and slush up there. So it's, it's a bit of an afterthought. 
And Steen, another thing I don't like is the way the toe plugs are installed on the OEM bars. Now, yep. this one has this flimsy metal tab that comes off the main tube there and you secure the plugs on that point. And from experience, these things get wiped out real easy. Yes, but they do. what's yep. going on over on the Ultimate? So with the Milford, with the Ultimate Next Gen Turbo, you've got two choices. So there's, there's actually mounting holes both sides. So left and yeah, right. Left and right. And that's yep. really important because I know that with the camper trailers that I hire out, often it's very, very difficult to get the plugs to go into the yes. back of the client's yep. car because they're located on the wrong side of the hitch. So that's, that's brilliant. That's yep. really, really good. Um, the finish. We need to talk about the finish. Well, there's a massive difference, isn't there? Yeah. Um, e even just sitting there on the bench, you can see this just looks like somebody's got a, a rattle can of satin black and just gone over it. Yeah, it certainly looks cheaper. Whereas this, this uh, Milford Armatex finish is uh, something else again. Uh, it's, well, it's a polyester free zone. It is, and it's massively mar resistant, so it's very hard to mark. Uh, very chip resistant and very corrosion resistant yeah. as well. I reckon I could take this down a gravel road on yeah. the first day and it'll yeah. be all peppered with stones yeah. and looking pretty horrible. Exactly. And the other thing that happens, obviously, and, and we'll talk about packaging shortly, is chip resistance. Yep. And, and the way these bars are designed to be packaged and sent, yep. this one is uh, not going to chip like this one does. Yeah. I've, had, I've had powder coated gear turn up that's chipped. And once you get a chip in it and the water gets into the chip or the crack, yep. Two years later, it's flaking off and you've got a rust problem. Yeah, that's, that's You're not, not going to get that with this bar. Yeah, so Milford yeah. go to a lot of trouble for the DIY wire yep. to receive the goods in really good condition, yeah. individually laid out, separated by cardboard, uh, so there's no chance of components coming yeah. together uh, and getting uh, scarred uh, up. To me, the difference is this bar, your bar, has been built to make money. Yep. Whereas this bar has been built by nerds, engineering nerds. Yep. Steam. These things. Shackles. Shackles. Attach the chains, do a very important job, yep. but they are a full pain in the ass. Why? Because they're never easy to get to. And I'd like to draw your attention to this. So here we are with the OEM bar, and its points to attach the shackles to are located right in there. And, and we should point out that the, the, the rear bumper on this car is coming in where? Probably about there. Yeah. So this is well back under the rear bumper. Yeah, so yep. you've got to get down on your haunches, reach up underneath the, the yep. back end of the car, and fiddle around and try and install this shackle, which goes something like that. And I can tell you, it is awkward. There is no two ways about it. So Steen, show us the shackle fit. Okay, so I don't have to struggle with a vertical fit. The Milford fit over here is a horizontal one, so you need to slide the shackle in and uh, do it up. Super easy and we're very well thought out. Yeah. Yep. Piece of cake. So there you are, the differences between an OEM tow bar and the Milford Ultimate are like chalk and cheese. And if you'd like to find out more about Milford's Ultimate Tow Bar, go to the Milford web website, www.milford.one.